Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. November 20th, 2017. We're back at it. Good to be with you. 105 in the afternoon as we continue along here at the Voice of Boston, WRKO. Mike Siegel for Jeff Cooner. And I want to remind you, take a look at my column at WRKO.com. It's all about the Roy Moore, Al Franken duplicity uh, being treated very differently in those two cases. Uh, you can get a chance to look at that. If you want to pick up a book about talk radio and the power of talk radio, uh, I did this book uh, over a period of a couple of years, actually, to make the point that talk radio is a very powerful vehicle. It's called Airing the Wave during this digital era. A lot of what we did back in the 90s uh, has now been really reformed and changed because of the digital era that we're in. So, uh, And this is a great background about the power of talk radio, a lot of the campaigns I was involved in, called Airing the Wave. Uh, and I wrote that book with you in mind because it's for talk radio listeners. It's available at Barnes & Noble and Amazon and all over the place uh, at, those, uh, at those websites. In the meantime, we have probably the premier person who's the uh, number one uh, warning individual, warning us about jihadism. Uh, and as she has said before, before 9-11, it was not even in her vocabulary. After that, she became inquisitive, looked into it, read the Koran, all of a sudden realized the danger and has become the leading voice to warn us about the dangers of jihadism, Pamela Geller. Miss Geller, how are you today? Very well. Thank you for having me, Mike. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, let me ask you, let, let's start with a couple of specific things. Uh, the case, I want to bring up Hillary because this case shows her disregard for American security. There's a guy by the name of Tariq Ramadan, 55 years old. He's a professor of contemporary Islamic studies at the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom. He's been accused by three women within the last month describing sexual assaults on them by him. And it actually goes back to the 80s and 90s molestation accusations of four minor students in Geneva. Uh, Hillary Clinton uh, gave this guy... Well, first of all, Colin Powell wouldn't let him into the country as Secretary of State. From 2004 to 2010, he was barred. Then in 2010, and I have the document in front of me that Hillary signed, uh, she writes, as a matter of discretion in accordance with the authority granted by such and such law of the Immigration and National Nationality Act, considering the national security and foreign policy interests deemed relevant in these consultations, uh, that it shall not ap the INA shall not apply for purposes of application for non-immigrant visa or for admission as a non-immigrant to Mr. Tariq Ramadan. I bring this up, it's only one case, but he's, a, he's a, a, a jihadist, he's a Sharia law guy, and she saw no qualms about letting him in, even though Colin Powell knew not, not to let him in. If she were president, we'd yeah, have been in real big banned. trouble. I mean, Bush banned him, just for knowing. Uh, he is the grandson of, the great grandson of the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood. He is absolutely a um, advocate for the Sharia, an advocate for uh, jihad. He is lauded by the left, as you said. He's a professor at Oxford, um, beloved. You know, they, they they love their terrorists. The left. Uh, it's not just jihad terrorism. They love terrorism. And Tifa. You know, this is a terrorist group designated a terrorist group by by Germany back in in the seventies. Uh, Tariq Ramadan. And no, you notice that you're not hearing a word about Tariq Ramadan and the multiple accusations of sexual attacks. Um, it's interesting to me that the left is, you know, obscenely quiet. Their silence speaks volumes uh, that um, uh, these multiple attacks, on, and now students are coming forward. Uh, I uh, want to congratulate the, the first woman who had come forward because it took a lot. They went after her, I don't have to tell you, you know, like, um, like chum, like it chalks on chum. Uh, but the idea that, yeah, Harvey Weinstein and Kevin Spacey, I mean, we see what's happening to these people. Uh, but, yeah, that Hillary Clinton lifted the ban and that he was lauded at universities where my colleagues and I, by the way, are blacklisted. I mean, we haven't, uh, I never get, I used to get asked to speak all the time. I haven't been in years. The only time I was invited was just in September to free speech week at Berkeley, which, by the way, was canceled. And what was more frightening than that was seeing hundreds, if not thousands, of young people marching against the freedom of speech, the foundation of a free society. Without it, a tyrant can wreak havoc unopposed. Uh, Oxford did not 
um, take any action against Tariq Ramadan until there was this outrage online and by students uh, where he's now taken a, a temporary a leave of absence. Um, I'm thrilled and shocked that that even happened because they were so, uh, you know, um, hell-bent on keeping him there. Uh, but this kind of treatment of women under the Sharia, frankly, is standard operating procedure. And we never hear about that. You know, when I did an ad campaign highlighting the gender apartheid, female genital mutilation, honor violence, honor killing, it was the left that attacked me. It was the left that got my ads taken down. The same left that made pro-Sharia, pro-Jihad, anti-Semite Linda Sarsour the leader of the Women's March. Uh, the Glamour magazine named her one of the women of the year. Here is a woman who said Ayan Hersi Ali, a brave former Muslim who lives under 24-hour death threat, like myself, lives under fatwa, which is a death sentence, which is the name of my book, Fatwa Hunted in America, said, uh, Linda Sarsour said that Ayan Hersi Ali should have a vagina cut off and deserves an ass whooping. I mean, this is who the left is. They are the enemy. They are the you know, enemy of freedom. They are the enemy of Americanism. It's, 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 I, the point I wanted to bring up, and you're right, obviously, Pamela, but the, the, the real point I wanted to make here is that Hillary Clinton did this. Obviously, the previous administration knew how bad this guy Tariq Ramadan was. His own brother, by the way, said, well, in order, for, in order to, uh, to prove uh, that there was a rape uh, by an Islamic fellow, you have to have four witnesses. Four witnesses. So in other words, he's not saying, no, the brother isn't saying four, he didn't four, do it. Four male witnesses. Yeah. And, and so the brother isn't saying that, that uh, Tariq Ramadan didn't commit these sexual abuses of these women and girls in the 80s and 90s, but that you find me four men who will agree to testify to this, and then we'll talk about it. That, that's the way they behave. And Hillary Clinton that's let true. this guy in. So what, what, what does that I'm, say about I'm, Hillary Clinton if she had been elected president? Well, look at her husband. Now more women are coming out against her. Another four women came out against her husband. And look no, but how I, I mean, handled that. I, yeah. no question. But I, and she protected him. She was she was his enabler. She obstructed justice in the case of Bill Clinton, her husband. But I'm talking about absolutely the, the, the outrageous act of letting this guy into the country. It tells you that she had no qualms about jihadism, no qualms about Sharia law, no qualms about these radicals coming in. Absolutely. I mean, the four male witnesses, just for knowing, the, Tariq Ramadan's brother didn't just make that up out of nowhere. That is according to Islamic law. According to Islamic law, a woman needs four male witnesses to testify on her behalf, as if four males or any male that would watch it and do nothing and yet then testify on her behalf, again, is absurd. I mean, uh, you know, this is part of the brutal and extreme ideology that, by the way, Hillary consistently supported. This is a woman who had a meeting with the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation is 56 Muslim countries plus the Palestinian Authority, that the world's, the largest world body at the UN, whose objective is to impose Sharia on the West to seek defamation laws, which is, you know, Sharia, blasphemy laws, where people are being killed. I am under a fatwa because I violated the Sharia. I, 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 I uh, criticized Islam. I showed a depiction of Muhammad, and that is why there is a death sentence on my head. She had the Organization of Islamic Cooperation to Washington behind closed doors to impose, to discuss ways of imposing Resolution 1618, which, by the way, Trump should act, uh, the Trump administration should actively work to, um, uh, to, to disengage from, to repeal. It is a, a, bla it is a blasphemy uh, resolution at the U.N., which is the Sharia. And this is what Hillary Clinton, and this is what she did with Tariq Ramadan, this is, work she, this is what she actively seeks to impose on the West. Of course, the media, which is aligned with the jihad force, never reports on this. But the fact is that she worked actively when she was Secretary of State to impose the Sharia, and she said the way we do it in America is to publicly shame people. 
that opposed Sharia, publicly shame people that opposed Islamic terror. And, and this is what the left has done to myself, to my colleagues, demonize, marginalize, and render us radioactive. They make us into monsters. Because it's, um, if you're it's, a monster, who's going to listen to the message of a monster, Mike? Well, she's the monster, Pamela, because she's the one yes. that's, that, that's giving a pass to Sharia law, to jihadism, and all that. But let me uh, turn to um, another issue under the Obama administration, by the way, with regard to Iranian-backed jihadists in Iraq, and we supporting them. November 13th, the Washington Free Beacon, Adam Credo, he writes just one, I'll just read one simple uh, paragraph. U.S. officials acknowledged Iranian-backed forces in Iraq could be using American-made arms, an admission that comes amid growing concern on Capitol Hill the U.S. government is quietly working with militia fighters in Iraq who are directly tied to the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, according to multiple sources familiar with the situation. Obama was actually using Ira Iranian soldiers supporting them in the fight in Iraq. Yeah, and this is consistent with Obama policy. I mean, we, see, we saw this in Egypt when he actively worked to oust our 30-year ally, Mubarak, the first Muslim leader to make peace with Israel. We saw this in Libya when he ousted a, a secular leader. No, prince, I, I, I grant you, Qaddafi uh, was no prince, but he did contain the jihad threat. And look what happened to Libya. Libya is a failed state. It is, a, it is now, you know, a chaos, jihad chaos, multiple jihadi wars, and a stronghold now of the Islamic State. Uh, he did this in, even in Iran, when there was really the only true freedom revolution. They talked about the Arab Spring, which was absurd. It was a euphemism for these, these Islamic supremacist revolutions, as we saw in Egypt. But he worked to, to keep the malocracy in place, the theocracy in place in Iran, when you had in June of 2009 the first freedom revolution. And how do we know that? It was led by women. It were women with eyeliner, women with high heels, women with hijab, but so what? It was led by women, and he helped crush it. I mean, in the most brutal and extreme way, the, the mullahs crushed that freedom revolution in June 2009. So, yes, his aiding and abetting of Iran is consistent with his pro-jihad policy. His nuclear pact with Iran was consistent with his pro-jihad policy, the aiding and arming of Iran, the billions of dollars that he released to Iran, which went where? It went to jihad terror groups. It went to Yemen, who was at war now with the, with, with, with the Saudis. It went to Hezbollah, their proxy in Lebanon, which is now on the brink of falling to Iranian rule. I mean, these are very... The, the consequences of Obama's pro-jihad policies will be as catastrophic as President Carter's pro-Khomeini policy in Iran. I mean, there are certain defining moments in history, and Carter ousting the Shah, our great friend in Iran, led to what we are suffering now. And I submit to you that Obama's policies will be even more disastrous in Middle East and in Africa and in the region. Well, uh, Claire Lopez at the Center for Security Policy has told me on this program repeatedly that, in fact, the um, Obama administration, Barack Obama himself, was, was focused on making Iran the hegemonic leader of the Middle East. That was his intent, which is why he did nothing to help the Green Revolution in 2009 that you mentioned, which is why he now has been found to have actually supported with arms uh, the Iranian Guard, which is unbelievable. They're fighting in Iraq, and he's helping the Iranians, a country that wants that calls us the devil and wants to destroy the state of Israel. Uh, great, great policy by Barack Obama there. We'll come right back with Pamela Geller and continue this conversation. Number to Boston is 617-266-6868. Glad to get your calls. What do you make of all of this? Uh, Hillary Clinton letting a guy into this country uh, accused of sexual assaults of women and girls. In the meantime, Colin Powell, the Secretary of State, would not let him in from 2004. And then in 2010, Hillary signs an order letting him into the country, apparently not really caring about jihadism and Sharia law making its way into the United States of America. Thank God she's not president. Can you imagine if she became president? Good to have you with us. Your calls are welcome. We get to those right here at The Voice of Boston, WRKO at 120. We're back, 123, Mike Siegel for Jeff Kuhner. We go back with Pamela Geller. We'll get right to your calls. Pamela, 
tragic case in Sweden. A woman is raped by a Syrian refugee back in March. Uh, now we find out that she's actually, she's actually committed suicide uh, in part because the police and the prosecutor refused to go after these uh, the rapist who had another friend with him in her apartment where they raped her, uh, or where the one guy raped her, even though they could have gotten DNA evidence, even though they admitted being in her apartment at the time she said they raped her, uh, the fact is that they did not even pursue this. They said there was a lack of evidence. What do you make of this? This is Swedish. This is this is the new Europe. This is the new Scandinavia after the uh, you know the Hijra, the Muslim immigration. The fact is, you know, Sweden is under attack. Uh, they have a rape jihad going on. Uh, the, the perps, by and large, are always uh, Muslims. This is this is covered up. You cannot talk about it. The fact that there have been like uh, 13 bombings in, in, in 21 days. The media is not talking about it. Their synagogues uh, have been under attack. Uh, the, their windows shout, shouted in, in Muslim Malmo. Um, it, you know, this is ongoing. Uh, it, it, this is a terrible story that you're citing about the young woman who killed herself. Uh, but it is hardly new. I mean, she just took drastic action. She couldn't live with it, and she couldn't live with the denial by by society. Uh, but the fact is, look, their migration board, the, the Swedish migration board, receives death threats from these migrants if they don't do what they're told. Um, you know, uh, they have no-go zones. The firefighters in Sweden uh, don't will not put out blazes after Muslims attack them when they go in to put out fires. This is all, I have a category on gellerreport.com called Sweden. Uh, these are all news reports that the media will not cover, which is why you should subscribe. I mean, you should absolutely listen to talk radio, but you need to subscribe to news sites like mine, gellerreport.com, because the media will not cover uh, these, you know, this ongoing jihad by these large Muslim populations. And the reason why M- Americans really need to know this is because Donald Trump, President Trump, is trying to put national security restrictions, restrictions on this migration from jihad regions. And the left is doing everything in their power. They find these uber left judges, whether they're in Hawaii or other, you know, random places where they know will rule in their favor to stop the president. And we have to stop them. Let's go to Paul and Wilbert for Pamela Geller. Paul, you're on WRKO, the voice of Boston. Hello. Pamela. Can you hear me? Go, yes. yes, sir. Go right ahead. Well, first of all, I want to applaud Pamela for showing the courage that she has because what's so disturbing and disgusting about this country and other parts of the world is if men are acting like men and not like the emasculated wimps that we've become, we're supposed to protect and provide for women, okay? And this is uh, talking about the religion of peace. When we have uh, ethnic men hurting women, whether it's through rape or you know, going after them because of their sexual hang-ups, and the media and liberals in, uh, in America cover up, they're complicit in the evil that's being Im- that we're allowing to come into our country. And it's, and it's pathetic when the media doesn't just call for what it is. I happen to be a Christian Catholic. I wanted that all to come out as soon as they know, uh, knew about Catholic priests doing things. Now we have things happening with Muslim men. And it's nothing to say that I'm against the whole religion of Islam, but most people who speak about the Muslim faith know nothing about it. They know nothing about Muhammad. They know nothing about the practices that take place in all these countries. Last night, 60 Minutes shows Saudi Arabia bombing Yemen. That has to do with Sunnis and Shias. America has to be the voice not only of reason, but of conviction to our what? Judeo-Christian morals and mores. Paul, I thank you for calling. Pamela, go right ahead. Well, I agree. He covers a lot of ground. As far as the emasculation of men, I believe feminism is at fault. Uh, Men are the image of, of what women make them. Men are clay. And I think feminism has been the most destructive force for for women. You know, I mean, look, I was one of four girls. I was raised in a household where we could do anything. We could be anything. I have two sisters out of doctors. I never thought in any way, shape, or, way, shape, or form that I was subjugated or subdued. Um, uh, you know, when I was a kid, the big feminist issue was the ERA, Equal Rights Amendment. I, and I, as I said, I was apolitical, really, before 9-11. But even the ERA, I never understood it. And I'm like, why do I need something I already have? 
Why do I need an equal rights amendment? I, I, I already have equal rights. Uh, feminism is a very destructive force. And I think that's why men have be, are behaving the way they are behaving. As to the media, they are aligned with the jihad force. They are decidedly leftist. They are, there's a red-green alliance. And, you know, the left loves whatever totalitarian ideology there is of the day. A hundred years ago it was communism or Stalinism or the National Socialist Workers' Party. That was Nazism. Read Mein Kampf. Read Hitler's Mein Kampf. Yes, he was a vicious Jew hater, uh, but he was a hard leftist. And this idea, another big lie, a huge lie the media tells us that Nazism is a hard right ideology. Nonsense. It was socialist. It's what it was then. It's what it is now. And this idea, this big lie, is, is what they're advancing with Islam. Why do they always have to say Islam is peace? Why do they always have to say Islam is a religion of peace after every jihad attack? It's an absurd lie, but they have to keep repeating it because it is a big lie. And they, they, they don't want you to believe your eyes. They want you to believe their lies. Just, just right after the jihad in, on Halloween in New York City, you have Jake Tapper saying that Allah Akbar is a beautiful phrase. You have the New York Times not having one but two pieces in two days about how Alu Akbar is really, you know, very, very beautiful and misunderstood. No, no, it's a, it's a, Alu Akbar distortion. was Muhammad's jihad war cry. G- Muhammad, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, it was his jihad war cry. It is, a, it is a war cry. It is what is screamed before every and during every Islamic attack. So people have to get armed in the information battle space, which is why they should read my book, Fatwa Hunted in America. Why well, is an American like me, an American girl like me, living under 24-hour death threat that requires 24-hour security? Because well, I will not adhere to Islamic law in this country. That is why. Most Americans are unaware of that. They don't know that I and Wafa Sultan, I, and Ayan Hersi Ali, that we're living under 24-hour death threat. I've, I've got to get to the... will not adhere to Islamic law. I've got to get to the news. you got it all in. Gellerreport.com. Always a pleasure, Pamela. Thank you for being with us. Continue the great, courageous work. We appreciate it for sure. Thank you, Mike. Thanks very much. Good to have you with us. 131. News is next at The Voice of Boston, WRKO. WRKO, The Voice of Boston. We're back at it. Good to be with you. Mike Siegel in today as we begin Thanksgiving week. Lots of people already getting ready. Enjoy that big day with your family and loved ones. 1.37 in the afternoon at the Voice of Boston, WRKO. We continue the conversation on this issue of jihadism. Hillary Clinton letting a guy into this country who was banned by the Bush administration and by Secretary of State Colin Powell. In 2010, Hillary lets him in. He had been uh, con- accused of uh, sexual abuse of girls and now women as well. Uh, and uh, his brother claims, well, if you find four male witnesses to the event of the rape, then we can talk about it. That's what Sharia law is, and she let this guy in. His grandfather was the founder of uh, Muslim Brotherhood, and you would think there'd be some scrutiny about a guy like that. So imagine if Hillary were elected uh, after letting a guy like that into this country, notwithstanding the jihadism and Sharia law. And then in Sweden, uh, the case of the woman who commits suicide after being raped because, in part, the prosecutor and the police refused to uh, go after the guy who committed the rape because they said there was no evidence, even though they could have gotten DNA. That's an obvious way to make the connection. And they didn't do it, even though the guy admitted being in her apartment at the time she said she was raped. Fundamentally outrageous on the part of the Swedish police and prosecutor. They stand down. Uh, The tail is wagging the dog. The jihadists are winning in countries such as Sweden. We've got to stop it in its tracks. Your calls are welcome at 617-266-6868. Good thing we have a tough president who's going to stand up to the crowd. Richard in New Hampshire, you're on with Mike Siegel for, at the Voice of Boston, WRKO. Hello. Hi, Mike. Thank you for taking my call. I'm sorry that I missed Pam. I wanted to say uh, two things. I wanted to say, first of all, of, of all the things that Donald Trump has done that, in his accomplishments in the nine months that he's been president, the one that I think is the, the greatest is that he prevented Hillary Clinton from becoming president and from her ever becoming president. She will never be the president of the United States. And I don't think it has anything to do with what she said or what she did or what she didn't do or what she should have done or any deceptiveness on her part. She just positively exudes dishonesty. It's written all over her. And um, I'm just delighted that she isn't the president of the United States. And I also wanted to say one other thing, Mike. 
and that's re- regarding Iran and um, Obama's uh, decision not to speak up on behalf of the Green Revolution when that occurred. We missed an opportunity of a lifetime, how the world might have changed if he had spoken up on their behalf. We, we missed an opportunity. Well, it's Jimmy Carter and Barack Obama, ironically, the two of them, uh, put together an abominable policy that allowed Iran to become, in effect, the hegemonic leader uh, in the Middle East, which is what Obama wanted. Now, I'm not saying Jimmy Carter wanted that, but by being a coward, uh, by, by allowing the tail to wag the dog, uh, when when basically Jimmy Carter dissed the Shah of Iran and uh, gave in, and then Khomeini came back, I believe from Paris, to take over, that's what happened. That's why it happened. It's because of Jimmy Carter, and Obama simply just expanded Iran's role. You know, before, before Obama, Iran was in trouble economically. He gives him $150 billion, he gives him billions in cash on that airplane exchange for prisoners. In other words... Fundamentally, Barack Obama, uh, by also supplying military support for the Iranian Guard, which was fighting in Iraq, gives them that power over Iraq. Luckily, we don't have uh, Hillary as president because she would have continued the same policy. I totally agree. I totally Ap- agree. All right, Richard, I appreciate it and I thank you very much. Let's go to Gary in California, 617 266 6868. That's the number to Boston. Gary, you're on with Mike Siegel at the Voice of Boston, WRKO, for Jeff Cooner. Hello. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Uh, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate that. Wonderful show, by the way. Uh, listen, I, I want to stress that, well, number one, Winston Churchill once said that socialism cannot exist without a propaganda machine, okay? Now, we, we, because of that, Mike, we have the problem in, in Congress and, and our political parties because they've gotten too powerful and too corrupt, okay? If you want to, okay, if you want to destroy the propaganda machine, you must, you must take care of congressional term limits. And that's, that's why we have the problems that we have in this country today. You brought up that point earlier today. You said, are we losing our country? And it is true because we don't have uh, those, those checks and balances in place like congressional term limits. You can't find any problem in this country, Mike, I believe, that isn't attributed to the uh, media propaganda machine working hand in hand with Congress and these politicians. If you have congressional term limits, you can exact, you can, you, you can eliminate a lot of these problems. And I challenge you and Jeff and all of you listeners to, you know, to talk about the fact that we need term limits in Congress. And I, it just, it just, it, it, the top of my head just wants to blow off because I, I just don't see any talk at all about congressional term limits. So, well, uh, let, me, it, let me make this point to you, sir. Uh, in 1994, when uh, Newt Gingrich put together his contract with America, one of the ten points was, in fact, term limits in that. And he couldn't get it done because those members didn't want to uh, basically vote themselves out of a job. I then got together on a national campaign with a tax foundation, and we did the campaign called Throw the Hypocrites Out. And what we said was, let's vote every member of Congress out, even the good ones, simply to make the point that we still have the power, because ultimately the people have the power, uh, without any question about this, Gary, and that's the way it is. We uh, we are the uh, sovereigns of this nation. Uh, the voters are the employers of these people, and we loan the power to members of Congress. We don't give it to them. They don't take it from us. We, give, we loan it to them for a period of time. And so I said, with the uh, foundation that I worked with, let's just say that everybody vote out their member, even if it's a good one. And, you know, it didn't work. And the reason it didn't work is because everybody says, oh, the members of Congress are terrible, but mine's a good one. And so they vote for their own. We have higher... Uh, recidivism rates, if you will, into Congress or re-election rates than they used to have in the old KGB and the Politburo. The Politburo had lower rates of return to that uh, body, which under the Soviet Union wasn't really a free body. It was controlled. But uh, they had lower return to that Politburo than we have to Congress. We usually have around 95% return. So it's up to the American people, Gary, isn't it? 
Exactly, exactly. As a, Mike, that's exactly true because Congress is not going to do anything about congressional term limits. The people in this country have to speak up. Everybody that calls into these stations has to speak up. There has to be a conversation about having congressional term limits. If you want to bust up these rhinos, you want to bust up these Democrat socialists, you have to do it through congressional term limits. You can't have members of Congress in office for 30, 40 years. It's ridiculous. It's insane. Why aren't people yelling and screaming about this? If you want to take care of the problem about Judge Roy Moore and uh, Al Frank and, and all of these problems, you have to have congressional term limits. That's it. I appreciate it, and I thank you for calling, sir. Let's go to um, Coptic, and you're next at the Voice of Boston, WRKO Coptic. Hello. How you doing, Mike? Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I know that I'm a regular caller. Um, I know from Coptic, I believe that you can tell I'm Egyptian, okay? So okay. Christian, Egyptian, Coptic, uh, we have minority in Egypt. We've been talking. Uh, let me ask you a question. Team. Let me right. ask you a question. Uh, there was a graphic, grotesque photograph on a beach area where 21 members of ISIS in their black garb hold, were holding swords at the heads of 21 Coptic Christians from Egypt. And, of course, ultimately, they cut off all of their heads. You had to have some feelings about that as a Coptic Christian yourself. What were your thoughts then? Most of them, they are very close to my city, which I live in, in Egypt there. And we are so proud that they being, we consider them as a martyrs. Martyrs that's being, being persecuted in the, in the old days, like maybe 1600 years ago, by the Romans, and after that by the Islamic rulers in that time. When they forced them, they asked them to like deny and decline Jesus, but they refused, so they cut their heads. They usually cut their heads. That's the fastest way, you know, just to get rid of them. So our feeling was terrible in that time, of course, you know, but in the same time, believe it or not, their own families, they were happy. You know why? Because they believed that they uh, became martyrs and they, all their souls, you know, is being sent to the sky. So let's back again to my, whatever I, I'm calling for, Mike, you know. We've been talking too much about the, uh, the Islamic and the jihadists and all of this stuff and all the irresponsible decision which Obama, he did it in his time when he was the president of the United States. I believe that he got he get a lot of disasters about, about all, all of his decisions. The first, when he make a deal with the Muslims' brotherhood in Egypt, you know, he, for the last minute, for the last minute, he tried to make, like, the coup, which the Sisi, he did it, Abdel Fattah Sisi, the, 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 the recent president, he's the best ever president we see him right now. He's yeah, the you know, by the way, you know, you make... Brotherhood. You make a good point because um, Obama was in the pocket of Mohammed Morsi, the Muslim Brotherhood president, and, and, and Obama gave him military weaponry and all kinds of stuff and support, and it took the people of Egypt to go out in the street, protest, and demand his removal, that the military took him out, and then el-Sisi came in. But the problem was el-Sisi is, a, as you said, a very good president, and Obama wouldn't give him anything. He gave him no support. He chastised Egypt because they had gotten rid of his friend, the Muslim Brotherhood. Obama was clearly a jihadist sympathizer and, and a, an Islamic uh, fundamentalist sympathizer, and people don't want to recognize that, but clearly his behavior, his actions demonstrated that, certainly in the case of Egypt. Mike, I'm so glad that you have a good background about what's going on, but because, you know, I, 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 I talk to a lot of people, you know, like, well, unfortunately, the Americans, they're not aware about how is the Islamic jihadist, they have a terrible, uh, 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 like, uh, Islamophobia about what's going on, you know, do you want to, do you want to just persecute everybody, you know, this is a problem here. Well, Hillary Clinton, she was behind all of this disaster that happened in Benghazi because she was not aware about what's going on there. Obama, he opened the, 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 the gate for all the refugees, the Syrian, you know, to come over here to the States, you know, and now we try to clean up. So what? I mean, this is, this is a problem. Unfortunately, a responsible decision from individuals, they're not aware about, they're not qualified to be, like, working in the government, and they, they make it a lot of disaster here in the States. And no question that, about it. Are, uh, you know, the, the point is, the point is, uh, uh, what, what, what Obama, he did in his, in his, uh, in his regime, huh? Well, I'll tell you, Coptic, I appreciate the call. I've got to get to a break. I thank you. But what he did in his regime, as you call it, and it probably was that, is that he opened up the borders to anybody. He let people in 
who were um, harmful to this country. Uh, there are cells in this country of ISIS right now, thanks to Barack Obama. Uh, he basically gave Iran the strength to be the hegemonic leader of the Middle East. Uh, he, he dissed Egypt after they got rid of the Muslim Brotherhood president. He did a lot. He, he, he uh, Syria. Um, he said it was going to be a red line, and then, of course, he did nothing after Assad went over that line. Uh, the sky was a diminution of the presence and the prestige, the safety and the security of the United States of America. That's what Obama did to this country, not for this country. It's 150 at The Voice of Boston, WRKO. Back at it, we are 154 in the afternoon at The Voice of Boston, WRKO. Mike Siegel in, good to have you with us. Back to your calls on this issue of selling this country out. You know, it's interesting how in the previous hour we talked about selling the country out in terms of the politics of moderation by the Republicans playing with the Democrats. Uh, the question of immigration, Republicans have never been strong on doing something about a wall or something about protecting this country any more than the Democrats have. It's all part of the old boy, old girl, good old system in the back rooms in the swamp in Washington, D.C. And now, of course, the country is being sold out in other ways by jihadism just walking over us under Hillary Clinton, letting a guy into this country, uh, Tariq Ramadan, who was um, the grandson of the Muslim Brotherhood founder, who was also a sexual abuser. And he had been banned. Now he's let in by Hillary Clinton in 2010. Luckily, she's not there now. We go to Rich in Brighton. Rich, you're on the Voice of Boston, WRKO. Hello. Hey, how you doing, guys? Good. Yeah, I love the topic. Um, you know, these people get into politics and they become drunk with power, and they, I swear they just become pathological liars. And I think they actually believe themselves. It was like when they caught Hillary saying, "Oh, you have to have two sets of standards: the ones you believe in and the ones that you sell to the public." How about the, what she said in Brazil? When she said in Brazil uh, that uh, we're going to have, we want to have. Uh, a borderless hemisphere, the whole yeah. hemisphere. Everybody come in and out where you want. How about that? Yes, and it, well, and in my opinion, it's all about wiping out a, a generation of people that have caught on to them and bringing in a new influx of immigrants that they can prey upon and do whatever they want because they're ignorant to the fact of what's really going on. And I think the people in America, a lot of people, are on to it, and, and they're, you know, and you're starting to see the, you know, the downfall a lot of these people and they're all going to get voted out and that's what we got to do get start voting them out we got to set term limits absolutely because they, they just have too much uh longevity in there and they start you know picking the pockets of all these big companies and they start you know trying to sell us a, a boatload of nothing really you got it right and i appreciate it and maybe the people are standing up to be counted uh which leaves us back of course to what we talked about earlier is too bad roy moore if he did the things that he's alleged to have done, it's too bad that happened because we need somebody in that position who holds the views uh, to protect the national interests of this country, not the global interests of the world. As uh, as the moderate Republicans like Mitch McConnell and John McCain and Jeff Flake and Heller in Nevada and Murkowski and Collins do, that's the tragedy of all of this. Tony in Salem, you're on the Voice of Boston, WRKO. Hello. How you doing? Good. Okay, so a, a couple calls ago, he was talking about trying to get term limits on Congress. Now, the way to do that is to invoke Article 5 of the Constitution, which would take power away from Congress and allow the people to vote in term limits. They're not going to do it themselves. They don't want to put themselves out of a job. We have to do it. So conventionofstates.com is the avenue for us to do that. Uh, it was talked about for a while where, you know, it really got hot, and then all of a sudden it just went away, because American people have very short memory memory term. So we have to continue pushing that, Article 5 of the Constitution, and invoke con conventionofstates.com. Well, that's very true. And as a matter of fact, there's already a movement in that regard. There's something like 28 states that have approved it. Uh, they're doing it for the balanced budget amendment. But once you get there, you can perhaps open it up. But you're right. The only way we're ever going to get term limits is going to be... And by the way, uh, speaking of term limits, it was Jefferson and others among the founders 
who envisioned that this would be a service to the country. Uh, it's turned out to become a career and the taking from the country for these politicians. Taking this Rolls-Royce health care. They don't get what we get. They take something very special. Enormous, enormous pensions. Enormous perks and benefits while they're in office. and that was, As well as in retirement. So this really wasn't what the founders intended. They intended for people to go to the house for two years, uh, the farmers or the merchants, the tradespeople, and then go back home. That's what they intended. They didn't intend for this to be a lifetime job as it's been turned into by these career politicians. So term limits would be in direct conformance and agreement with what the founders intended for us to have as a Congress of the United States. Uh, we'll come back after all the latest news. I want to mention that if you haven't had the opportunity, we'd love to have you take a look at the book I wrote on talk radio. A lot of the experiences I had in dealing with issues and actually getting things done for the benefit of the people. And we've updated it because it's now, of course, the digital era. And so this is all about talk radio, something that obviously you're interested in because you're listening to it. The book is called Airing the Wave. Mike Siegel, the author, me, and... Uh, I'm, I'm very proud of this book because I think it says a lot about the power of talk radio. Airing the Wave. Hope you get a chance to take a look at it and pick it up. Barnes & Noble, Amazon, wherever. Mike Siegel in for Jeff Cooner at The Voice of Boston, WRKO. It is 159. Stay with us. The Voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence, Boston. It's 2 o'clock.